we pulled together, we persevered, we rebuilt, and we were stronger than ever today than all of the other days. Now, is that not something worth mentioning? Is it not? <laughs> That's what happened. I'm <laughs> sorry I asked. really great food in small quarters together. <laughs> You're my girl. Yes. Hey, Charlie. You ready? Oh, she got it. So the cheating starts right from the beginning. <laughs> 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 If you're just joining us on this mini series, this is part two of riding 1,341 miles from Michigan to Florida. If you missed part one, we'll link it here, since that's probably a better place to start. Nice. <laughs> the power is on. Let me go see if it works. Yeah. In this episode, the boys navigate obstacles and dead ends while Wendy and I provide sad. Support and gear. <laughs> And that is what we are, supporting gear. And right now, supporting gear has to dump and reload. It's not really my job, but I'm gonna do it. If all goes to plan, the boys will complete Indiana and ride through Kentucky, Tennessee, and make their way to Mississippi, and then Alabama. That is, if they can even get out of Indianapolis. Is it? Uh-huh. Back to the road. Go back, go back, go back to, um... Oh my gosh! I don't even know why I listened to Bill. Can we just like skirt around that gate? Yeah? Can we just skirt around that gate? <laughs> oh, what is that? What is that? What does that say? Tell me that's a joke. Oh, man. Well, I guess it is closed after all. <laughs> we went anyway just to see. No. But uh, it's it's actually closed. I'm going to see how, if we can get through that sand, those sandbags over there. I think we drag it over those sandbags and we get over the other side. Feels like the one kid that gets all the kids in trouble. There's no, pre there's no better way to describe Bill than that. I mean, all of his friends watching right now are going, yes, yes. Bill. <laughs> you gotta appreciate Bill's determination. I mean, there's not much that this man is gonna turn around for. But in this particular case, it was a bit steeper than it looked on video. And Bill paid a bit of a price to cross this gap. Because right here, if you notice, Bill already was sporting a damaged hamstring. And at this point, something popped. And as Caleb and I were looking across the, the gap, we couldn't figure out what was wrong with Bill. You tired? Now I think it caused a problem. I don't know what that problem is. Is it all right? No. You can't push with it? Can't push. So now his hamstring is really damaged and he's lost power in that leg and we're only like 20 miles into day three. Uh, we're at 20 miles. Today's a 92 mile day. Lunch is at 62 miles. So we'll see if it kind of works itself out a little bit. Wendy's a nurse, we'll put a little Nurse Wendy magic on it. But little did I know that we're only a few miles from a much bigger problem. <laughs> You said if anyone falls, you gotta get on that camera immediately. <laughs> you all right? But did we pull through? Yes. Yes, we did. Yes, we did. Man, day three is an interactive day. How's the bike? How are these shoulders? Is it all right? <laughs> 
Indianapolis was proving to be challenging for us to get through. What ended up happening in this case is on the bike path, it was being resurfaced and there was just a small gap between the section of asphalt and the torn up part. And when Bill's wheel went into that little crack, he went over the handlebars. But uh, as Caleb says, um, you know, we're stronger than ever and uh, we regrouped and we got back on these paths. Indianapolis, you've got some beautiful bike paths, really. They just weave through the city. Um, other than some of the setbacks we had, we really enjoyed our time riding through there. And ultimately, the route led us right to Monument Circle. The Soldiers and Sailors Monument is the first monument in the U.S. to be dedicated to the common soldier. It was originally built as a memorial to Indiana's Civil War soldiers, but now it commemorates all Indiana soldiers who have served in wars prior to 1902, the year the monument was built. The monument stands 284 feet and 6 inches high, only 15 feet shorter than the Statue of Liberty. The cornerstone contains a copper box that holds an official list of all of Indiana's Civil War soldiers, copies of Indiana's two constitutions, and a 38-star American flag, accurate to the time the cornerstone box was assembled in 1888. The Monument Circle is such a prominent feature of downtown Indianapolis that the city has been nicknamed Circle City. If you're in the area, it's worth stopping by to check out and drive or ride around the circle. I'm ready. I'm gonna follow. Let's go around the fountain and then we'll and then we'll pick up the course and we'll go. All right. Follow that crane. Day three. Gloves come off. I hope these big gloves stay off. But I don't know. I just don't know. So good. Finally. Oh my gosh, it is so cold. I just thought I'd pop out of here without my jacket on. Bad, bad move. But anyway, I wanted to show you it's day three. We're hanging out at a casino. We're waiting for the guys. They are going through Indianapolis today. So um, hopefully they get some really great shots. But I wanted to show you, Wendy had to run up and get some stuff at Walgreens. And I broke out those collapsible cones. They are so good. If you are looking for, or if you have space for something that's really helpful and comes in handy, you would have maybe never thought of it, it's these cones. It, tells people, hey, I need you to not park here. I put one in front of the truck too. So, cause it just, it happens every time you go into a parking lot, there's tons of space and then people will park right in front of you. So I put one cone there and I got two right here. So I'm saving Wendy's spot. Anyway, I gotta get back inside, it's freezing. Hey there, my name is Trish and we're Harvest Host members. And I was wondering if we could come in tonight. Um, hold on just a minute. We'll have to take a look, hold on. Thank you. Here, Thank you. Okay, bye bye. Easy. Awesome. That's great. Good job. They said they kind of had limited space. Woo! Day three! Lunch break! We ended on the perfect song. It's the song where Rocky Balboa was dancing, going like this on stairs. Woo! I'm so hungry. Oh, good! Come on, let's eat! Today's just a total, it's just a disaster. I mean, there's just no other way to put it. Day three. Day. <laughs> Day. <laughs> Day three. Day three was a disaster. Hey. So what's going on up there? I pulled I off. I pulled over and there's a bike off of it right now. Okay, what happened? I just hit Bill. Now was it a hard day? Sure. Sure. Was it one of the hardest? Maybe. Oh yeah, no, the tire's done. I just hope the rim's okay. Sorry, Mark. That's all right. Sorry. No, just... Damn it. I saw that truck and I said, no, I'm stopping, but I said it as I was slowing down. All right, well, I didn't get this on camera, but uh, I collided with Bill. We were both looking right on a car, a truck that was coming pretty fast. We were both deciding if we should go or not. And I think we both decided not to go, but Bill decided before me. Well, obviously he was ahead of me. And by the time he stopped, like this, I went right into the side of them. What ended up happening is I uh, immediately busted the seal of my tubeless tire and uh, broke a spoke 
and so we uh, we taped a spoke together until we get it clipped tonight and then hopefully tomorrow in Louisville tomorrow night I can find a book a uh, bike store to put that spoke back on but in the meantime the the tires kind of got a twitch it's wobbly it's lopsided all right tires fixed spoke is missing <laughs> they ride at 5 it's 5 p.m. this ride the second part is still another two hours so that means they're going to be riding until sunset. They woke up before the sun rose and they got out there just as that blue morning sky started coming and now they will ride till sunset. Day three. <laughs> from this oh, oh here okay. what should I do they just want you on the gravel if you park behind us your your door will go out to the cornfield and we'll have a good view this is our first harvest host day on this trip and it is much appreciated because this host serves dinner drunken tots they're tater tots with cheese and bacon and all kinds of stuff or would you or rather nachos. have pork nachos those that RV know that setting up and staying for a few days makes RV travel easier. One of the challenges of this adventure is that we're moving every single day. And Wendy and I are cooking for five. And three of those five have pretty big appetites. This is unbelievable. Is there a we're, tiny spot we're like for that? Yeah. eating out in the middle of nowhere. But we're eating like gourmet foods. Yeah. When these ladies prepared by these ladies with love and tenderness. <laughs> <laughs> That's why we've been looking for Harvest Host locations as much as possible. That way we don't have to hook up the sewer or detach the truck, and in a couple cases, we don't even have to do the dishes. But truth be told, as much work as it's been doing all the RV stuff myself, it's also been rewarding knowing I can. Anybody who's new to this, it's gross. So you just have to give in to the fact that it's gross. But one of the things that he talks about, Mark talks about, is doing a little bit of gray just to make sure everything's working okay a little gray to make sure it's okay. Push it in, then rip the cord on the black. Let that go, and then you close it, and then use your gray to wash it all away. Okay? Sounds easy. When it comes to RVing with a spouse, usually one person does the inside, and one person does the outside. I like the inside because, well, it's warm. <laughs> and also because I like cooking. I hate cleaning, but you know, whatever, it's just part of the role. And Mark sets up everything else. I can't imagine that he loves doing the sewer or the water or the electric or lugging anything out, but it's very interesting to do the other person's job for a day because it's hard. I know if Mark went inside and he tried to cook dinner, he'd be like, what is this nonsense? And I'm out here lugging this big old grill and figuring out water and electric and all the things. So anyway, this is just a little reminder that whatever you do is challenging and whatever your partner does is challenging and sometimes it's helpful to remember that the other person is doing it for the team and you're doing it for the team and to appreciate them. He's back, my savior. Who? My savior's back. He's hooking up the water and the electric. Let me tell you something, Caleb. Today, when I was putting everything away, yeah, I called Nani today and I said, if I was in charge of all the outdoor stuff, we wouldn't be RVing. <laughs> <laughs> You're doing actually really good to be doing the inside and the outside. I'll tell you one thing right now. When Dad and I were just doing the outside and no one was in the inside, it was bad. <laughs> All I know is he's out there shivering right now after a long ride. Oh, there's Wendy. And I'm just excited that I have help. Yesterday 
we are emptying out black water yes. today. We're coming back up here and doing this. Yes. <laughs> We couldn't see the light at the end of the tunnel. We reached a point <laughs> where we weren't excited because we weren't close enough to the finish line. Day seven, one star, don't recommend. This is a great fire though, look at this. Thank you. Here we are, Tennessee State Line. Hey. Wow. You know, this is a half the halfway to Florida celebration. This is it! Yeah. Halfway. <laughs> there goes Trish and Wendy. We don't get to see them actually very much because most of the time they take like the interstates or direct path and we're always on the back roads. But this is the second day out of 10 that we've actually gotten to see them. And it's fun. It's fun to see them go by. Trish is always on the horn, so is Wendy. What are the chances that we would be on this back road, stop directly above the I-65 and go, I'm gonna get some footage of the freeway, turn on the camera, and within what, 10 seconds, Caleb goes, Caleb goes, hey, there's Bob! <laughs> and they, they honk and go under. That is amazing! I'll tell you, on a ride like that, you know, the, I could run on this adrenaline for the next 10 miles. I got two and a half out of that. <laughs> All right. That's our motivation for today, a bridge. A bridge. Yes. 22%. That's steep. That's really steep. I'm ready. You ready? Bill's butt feels like ricotta cheese in a plastic bag. 99.97. <laughs> yeah, I got 99.98. No, look, I'm 99.9. 100. Wow. Yeah. And there's the van. I mean, is that precision or what? <sighs> Woo! 100! 100! You guys are awesome! Oh my god, what was it? It was good. Two down from us out of the corner. I'm like oh, scared. Oh, she got a pull through. Oh, okay. What is so this? So you camp? guys, this is Piney Grove Campground on Springs Lake. In Mississippi. Bay Springs Lake, Mississippi. You guys are on six, which is a pull through, and then we're just right up here and okay. we're 12. So it's right awesome. back up here. Yeah, it's a back end. All right. It's going to be nice. It's right on the water. I like cats. Like, they're cool. But, like, I'm definitely afraid of them. So I don't, I don't like, really pet them. You've been scoring some great, like, state parks. Yeah, thank you. I can't believe we state parked yeah, this, this thing way. all the way down. So there's mom. <gasps> there's my so girl! Look at look at that spot. That's a great spot. Oh, wow. Oh, let's see. I, oh, so I, you go, oh, you I go right here. here. Okay. And yeah, then you're I go right 12, here. which is okay. there. Hi! You've got oh, a great spot. spot. Yeah, I got you a spot right by the water. Hey, thank you. Don't yes, see, look at this. Oh. Yes. Party at our site tonight. Woo. Oh, that's good. How was your first hundred? It was good. It was good. Yeah. Tenth day of riding, a hundred miles. I think that's fitting. On the tenth Caleb day of did great. riding. Yeah. I don't Caleb know the rest. Was sprinting and riding, and you know, we did forty-three hundred feet of climbing. We've. I just calculated, Wendy. I just calculated. 
100 miles here. There's only mm -hmm. on 15,000 feet of climbing left. That's fantastic. That's it? That's it. These things are gonna go fast which means Alabama, that things should be. start picking up because yes. we go so slow on these hills. Well, we had to get around the Smoky Mountains. I know. <coughs> you anyway. just got you just got around them, I think. Yeah. How's the site over there? Good? It's great. I'm gonna need you to level us up. Okay, I was wondering if you were level. That's it. Alright, I'll get my bike out and we'll go over there. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah. What is the, what is this campground? Because it's really cool. Tiny here. Grove. Yeah. Campground. Mm -hmm. I believe we're in Mississippi. Yeah. You guys made it over another border. Yes. I arrived here today yeah. and I pulled up and I walked up to the little mm -hmm. thing yep. and they said, do you have a reservation? And I said, no. And um, I also need two sites. <laughs> and then I said, he said, well, you're asking for a lot. I said, I know. And while I'm asking, <laughs> I'd really love a pull through because <laughs> I'm kind of a mediocre backer upper. <laughs> but and getting better said, every day. Yes. Kind of. Yeah. <laughs> so it's 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 like fluky. Like sometimes I'm really good, and yeah. then sometimes I am so bad. <laughs> wow. So and I do think that some it has something to do with the anxiety levels of the situation. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. So anyway. Yeah. All but right. They were really cute. They're like, we'll take care of you, honey. Oh yeah. Baby. Well, hey, because we're we're in Mississippi. Yeah. All right. Yeah, look at this. Look at this intense game. Only one will win. Only one will win. It's not gonna be you. Charlie's an expert at this game. Wendy discovered some incredible state parks along our route and a few of them we think you should know about. Starting with Tennessee, Piney Campground in Dover, Tennessee. This campground is located two hours west of Nashville at the southern point of land between the lakes. Piney is open from March to November with 384 lakefront and wooded sites. 284 have electric hookups. Planning continues. The planning continues. Wendy over there, who loves a good campfire. Love it! <laughs> it's our first one! Oh, yes. I'm waiting for this. Just 88 miles down the road is another Tennessee State Park gem, Mouse Tail Landing. Two campgrounds are offered within Mouse Tail Landing State Park. The main campground includes hookups to most sites, and Spring Creek Campground offers primitive camping along the banks of the Tennessee River. This campground was peaceful, quiet, and exactly what we needed since it was located directly off our route so the boys could leave right from the site the next morning. Moving further into Mississippi, we loved Piney Grove, another family-friendly campground with waterfront sites and full hookups. The sites were large, nestled in the trees, and some were on waterfront. Alabama didn't disappoint either. We drove out of our way to stay at Foscu Creek and it was worth the detour. Perhaps the best state park we've stayed at with large sites, fire pits, friendly people, and it was also waterfront. Absolutely gorgeous. Welcome to Alabama. Yes. It's totally beautiful. And people are coming through here on boats, so this leads really? into something bigger. You'll see more of this state park in next week's episode, the final part of this mini series, when my backing skills are put to the test. Gosh, I was so nervous. There were no pull through sites, okay? Yes. And so then I was like, Okay, we'll just make this Hold happen. Right, and of course, it's, you know, they have to escort you oh, yeah, and the whole yeah, thing. Yeah, yeah. And this guy's sitting out there and these two guys are oh sitting in their chairs just watching. Really? Just watching. There's one campground that wasn't a state park, but reminded us of one due to the quiet atmosphere. Look at this. Oh, isn't this so pretty? It's gorgeous. Oh my gosh. It's fabulous. It's the only one around. Located right along the Ohio and Illinois border, Birdsville there, right? Riverside RV okay. Park in okay. Smithland, Kentucky. This was not only a great place to stay, with much needed full hookups, but not a bad place to win a game of euchre. How did the game is euchre? It's, gonna it's uh, four to four. Mm -hmm. They're gonna they're gonna get Traverse City Cherry Fudge Ice Cream in the back five. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, it's very predictable. Yeah. Here's what's on. Here's what I'm looking at right here. And uh, Bill plays an ace. They get ice cream and they have six points. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, well, he just claimed. On camera that he's winning. No, so. I didn't. I just said I'm gonna have ice cream either way. Even if I don't care, I don't have to play by the rules. I have ice cream anytime I want. I have ice cream right now if I want. <laughs> I know. Anyway. Hey, so hey, let's just oh, let's hey. pull it out. I, listen, it's one to one. It is one to one. It's one to one. Lawn, my laundry bag right here. I wore it <laughs> at first. Yeah. But we just haven't had an opportunity to get to a laundry mat. So <laughs> you get the you get the bicycle jersey. <laughs> I think this is it right here. Oh yeah, that's it. <laughs> that's the one. Here you go, Mark. Hold it up. Show them what you got. This one. And this is what you've won. 
<laughs> All right, we're ready to go. I am wearing the winning jersey. Uh, this is essentially the yellow jersey in the Tour de France, the Euchre, winning Euchre team. Of course, we're tied up. We have one more Euchre. It's tied. It's tied. Look at her. Look at her. Look at her. Arms folded. That's short lived. That Euchre isn't the only game we played on this trip. Caleb had his own thing going, and that involved logging trucks. I believe I mastered the art of the honk, and even a few trains in my heyday. But the logging trucks, Peterbilt, Mack, Kenworth, easy money. trucks they deliver every time don't they you're gonna miss all the logger truck honking i am going we're done with this yeah because a normal semi just doesn't compare to all these yeah. logger trucks the logger trucks are the bomb there's a question yeah. they all have horns and they don't hesitate to use them they know how to use them and they do it politely just the right distance and they wait until they're just a little bit in front of us before they honk i mean everything about it is right There we go. I think, I think it's a hundred. I think we're at a hundred. Woo! I'll tell you what, Caleb has a knack for getting these truck drivers to honk their horns. I have had more truckers honk at me than ever in my life. It's a learned skill, it's a learned skill. I don't, I don't expect anybody to get it the first time around, but I, I got it, I got it. <laughs> I got it, yeah, but I got it. And a shout out to those Alabama boys. You are good at honking your horn. Look at that pretty dog. Hey buddy. This is probably a good time to talk about dogs. Before we, oh, before we went on this adventure, there were a few things we were concerned about. Dogs never crossed my mind. But it became very clear on the first day that dogs were gonna be a big part of this adventure. Good boy, good boy. Come on. You wanna run? Come on. Come on, let's run. Let's run, you're a good runner, you're running 15. Good boys, oh, all three boys. Okay. is most of these dogs are running purely off of instinct. They see us in the front yard, in their front yard, and they think, protect, bark, be tough, and, and look really mean. And most of the time, they just wanna have fun. And their second instinct is when they see a bike, is to chase the bike. And so they start running after us. And most of the time, these dogs just wanna have fun and run. The camera's been off for some of the best dog footage. You have to, you have to agree that the best dog footage would be off camera because <laughs> You're riding along and it's like, whoa! You know, normally I can see a dog up there, I'm like, that dog's gonna be a problem. I'm gonna turn the camera on right now. But there is one dog that requires a special mention. This dog was waiting for us. This dog was stalking. As I looked up the road, I saw it low to the ground and then it moved five feet closer to the, to the street and then it lowered again. And I said to Caleb, I turned on the camera and I said, watch out, this dog's gonna charge us. He's gonna charge us. Nope, nope. Nope. Hey, hey, hey! So after this dog charges, I yelled at it, and then it comes behind us, and it comes up behind us on the other side of the road. Yeah, that dog, that dog was, he knew what he was doing. So, anyhow, it's been a, it's been a very eventful dog day. Bye-bye. I'm gonna miss these dogs. I am too. We've been on a journey with these dogs, and I will say, I'm gonna miss them maybe the most. I got that one. 
Join us next week for the third and final installment of this pedally bike adventure as the boys get a police escort out of town. Wow, we got sirens? I don't know what I did to deserve that, but it's pretty good. <laughs> they rejoice in seeing the ocean on their Garmin devices. There it is. You can literally see the ocean in the Garmin. Mark weighs in on the last day. I was 179 when we started, and now I am. And Bill and Wendy share their thoughts on RV life. Yeah, totally I don't fine. want to tell you how much more comfortable I've gotten. <laughs> <laughs> And we get to print another disregard sticker. Things that are a bit out of our control happen from time to time. A lot to cover in a single episode, all right here on KYD. Hold on, before you ask your questions, we're too far from the finish line. <laughs> we weren't just beginning. And what happened? <laughs> we were in the middle. We're in the middle. We were in the middle. <laughs> I gotta stop recording.